Today we're going to look at how to take one of our previous programs we completed using inputs to control outputs and modifying it a bit to create a loop and uh, basically an activation and deactivation switch. So this, this tutorial comes in really handy when you get to project 2.4 and looking at part of the design requirements that are needed to complete that actual project. So taking a look at our design requirements, you can see that it's asking for our device to use at least one input component, which we use, which is our pressure sensor. Um, it must use one micro bit, which we are using, as well as a device that controls the output component, uh, which in this case, we are actually using two LEDs. The fourth design requirement asks us if the user can activate or deactivate the device as needed. And that means being able to turn it on and off. And a very common misconception I see is that we tend to try to just power down the micro bit instead of actually writing this into our code where we can utilize different inputs to basically kick it out of a loop. So what we're going to look at doing is just taking our code and modifying this so that we can create an activation or a deactivation switch. Now, the way that I like to do this is I like to use this through the use of variables. Since you can manipulate variables and make them true or false or whatever you want them to be, we can kind of manipulate them to work in our, in our best interest here. Now, one of the things I will consider when kind of going through this, if you haven't watched my video on um, using conditions, I would highly suggest you go and take a look at that because that is going to explain um, why we are using multiple if statements rather than an if or an else if statement as we go through this. So let's take a look at our code. Uh, as of right now, what we are looking at doing is we are setting our pressure sensor to read digital pin 1. And if that pressure sensor is equal to 1, we're going to get an LED on pin 0 and pin 2 to basically turn on for about 200 milliseconds, and then they'll turn off for 200 milliseconds. And as long as that pressure sensor is pressed, it's going to keep going and blinking. The second we let go of that pressure sensor, that else statement is where we're going to go ahead and turn them off. So we're going to need to kind of modify this a little bit. So we're going to kind of break this down. The way I like to do this, as I mentioned, is I like to create variables in order to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable. And in my variable drawer, I'm going to go ahead and call this power. So this is what we're going to kind of manipulate to activate or deactivate our sensors. Now you can call this activation switch deactivation switch, the name doesn't really matter, but power is something that is easy for me to kind of remember. So we're going to create that power variable, and I'm going to go ahead and set that power variable to always be true. So we're going to go into our logic drawer and find the true statement. So when my program starts, that power variable is going to be true. We're going to deactivate it by turning that variable into a false later on down the road. So we're going to kind of modify this. So I'm going to drag that code out right now. We're going to be bringing this in as we kind of go through this. One of the things I do like to add is I do like to add a little pause block after this just to give your program some time to think before it moves any further along down the road. So I'm going to go ahead and add a one second pause in there. Now here's where we're going to start to add multiple while loops along with your if statements. And we're basically going to force our program to get stuck in those loops until we want to pull it out. And that's where the deactivation comes in handy. So we're going to go ahead and create a loop. And we're going to create a while loop. And what we want to call here is we want this loop to run as long as our power is true. So I'm going to use another logic block. And we're going to go ahead and says equals. And what we want to make equal is the power variable. So we're going to go ahead and say as long as the power variable is true, our program is going to stay in this loop. So it should get stuck in there until we decide to turn it to false. So this is going to be our main loop, kind of creating almost an infinite loop until we want to change that variable state. From here is where we can start to bring in bits of our other pieces of code. We're going to go back in and bring that pressure sensor. So as long as the power variable is equal to true, we're going to go ahead and read or set that pressure sensor to read digital pin 1. From there, we're going to go ahead and look at our if statement. So now I'm going to pull these guys out for right now because we're going to have to manipulate this just a little bit. But I'm going to drop that condition in there. So now we're reading what the pressure sensor is reading. And if the pressure sensor is equal to 1, what we need to do is create another while loop. And this while loop is where the first part of that deactivation switch really kind of comes in. 
So we're going to add another while loop. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and utilize the B button. So I'm going to go ahead and find my button A pressed, and I'm going to change that to B. And I'm going to grab another logic statement here that says equal to. And we're going to go ahead and say while the B button is equal to false, which means we want to make sure that this program is going to run as long as we are not pressing the B button. So this while loop will keep going and going and going until we decide later on down the road to press the B button. Once we create this while loop, now we can go ahead and look at bringing in the other parts that we created in our inputs controlling outputs. And that is that both the LEDs on pin zero and pin two will turn on for 200 milliseconds and then off and repeat that on and off. So the nice thing about this is that once that pressure sensor is pressed, that LED is gonna keep blinking. Even if we release the pressure sensor, we're now forced our program to get stuck in this loop where it is just going to keep blinking on and off. So if this is an alarm system, we don't want the alarm to actually go off until we tell it to go off. So we're kind of forcing our program to get stuck in that loop. Now, once we get in this loop, we need a way to get it out of that loop. And that's where we're going to go ahead and create another if statement. We want my program to constantly be reading both of those if statements. So I'm going to remove the else. And in this case, I'm going to go and grab another if statement. And if you notice this if statement is gonna go outside of the other if. So we have multiple if statements at this time. So now what we're gonna take a look at doing is going ahead and adding well, what happens if we do press the B button. So now I can bring that button A press and change it to my B. And in this case, when we press the B button, we want basically four things to happen. We wanna change the state of my variables. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the state of power and instead of that being true statement, we're now gonna go ahead and change that so it's now a false statement. Power has now become false. And from there, we wanna go back and make sure we're still reading this. We still wanna make sure we can read that pressure sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and drop that back in so that my program can still read what the state of that pressure sensor is. And then last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and back in and make sure that we drop in my LEDs. So now if we take a look at this, what we're going to see is when we go ahead and test this out, and I'll go to full screen here for you, and when we go ahead and check, you can see there's my pressure sensor. We have all my buttons, but now what we see is happening here is, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off for a second, is we have LED 1 is on pin 0, my pressure sensor is on pin 1, and we have my LED 2, which is on pin 2. At this time, none of them are turned on. All states are turned to zero. But what happens when we actually go ahead and turn that pressure sensor and turn it to one or make it a true statement? In this case, just like in our inputs controlling outputs, you can see that my LEDs on pin zero and pin two are now flashing. The difference is what happens if I release the pressure from pin one? In my previous program, those LEDs would have turned off. But right now what's happening is we're actually stuck in that while loop while the B button is not being pressed. So those LEDs have no way of getting turned off until we deactivate the actual micro bit. And the only way to deactivate that micro bit is to know the secret code, which in our case is a very simple press of the B button. So when you press the B button, it now kicks it out of that loop, returning all of them back to a zero state. So again, if we look at our program in a, it, overall, we're using a variable, power variable actually, to create a true statement. And then we're also using a while loop of when the button B is pressed, which is equal to false, to kind of manipulate our code and keep it stuck in certain loops until we want to pull it out. By using the B button then, we're able to basically change the state of the power variable and turn both of those LEDs off. Now this will work with almost all of your sensors that you have, but what you have to understand is the flow of the actual program. So please feel free to try this out and hopefully it works for you.